If you have been around YouTube during the early 2010s, then you most likely have noticed a big trend going on that caused a lot of YouTubers to explode in popularity. Talking about the trend for horror games, obviously. Amnesia specifically was the one that seemed to have started it all, which later caused the snowball effect of a bunch of horror minigames coming out one after another, which essentially were for the most part the cheap jumpscare games without much substance in them, mostly effectively scary, more thanks to the creepypasta surrounding them than the actual game itself. But there was one specific minigame that seemed to be way more ambitious than just your regular Slenderman. And that game is SCP Containment Breach. Initially released back in April 2012 by Finnish developer Jonas Rikkonen, known online as Regalis. As time went by, the game went through a variety of changes and additions. SCP has come a long way since its first version. Since 2014, the game has been developed by Undertow Games, which is a company Regulus had launched himself due to the game's success. In 2018, SCP saw its final completed version. Mods for the game, however, are still coming out to this day, and for that reason in this video, I decided to refer to the SCP Ultimate Edition, which is a huge mod made by Japka that fixes many game breaking bugs makes the game feel way more fluid, and it's just a more profound experience overall. That is the version I played, and I truly recommend it. I'll post the link to the mod in the description. I need to also warn you about a certain version of the game on Steam, called SCP Containment Breach Remastered. Don't bother with it. I have also tried it, and that one is very glitchy, and adds things that completely ruin the atmosphere. From what I understand, this is actually an old version of Japka's mod converted to Steam without his permission, and on top of it, made into something worse. So yeah, I would advise avoiding it and support the actual creator. Again, link is in the description. By the way, if for some reason like me you encounter a problem with memory access violation while trying to run the game in full screen, just switch it to borderless and it should work fine. It did for me and the game has not crashed even once. Upon launching the game, you are welcomed by a very eerie menu screen with remarkably calm and curious ambient. Before starting your journey, you are presented with a choice of difficulty, which I think is essential to consider for the best experience. So let me break it down. In the Ultimate Edition, there are five different difficulty levels. Safe level, as the name suggests, makes the enemies easy to handle and less aggressive. It also allows to save the game at any given time and it gives 10 inventory slots. Euclid makes the enemies more aware and gives only 6 inventory slots. The fundamental change here is that saving is now only allowed in certain locations, mostly referring to active computer screens. Cather makes the enemies significantly more aggressive, gives only 4 inventory slots, and does not allow you to save at all. The moment you die, the game is over. Apollyon is just as hard as Kedar, but on top of it, it leaves you with only two inventory slots, and the entire HUD in-game is hidden. Esoteric is basically create your own difficulty. You can choose between inventory slots, HUD, saves, and all that. From my personal experience, I would recommend playing the game on Euclid. It gives the most balanced and fair experience. Lack of being able to save anywhere really keeps you on the edge, and the aggressiveness of enemies is just right. Six inventory slots feels fair too, especially since in game we can find clipboards and wallets that are able to store our items inside with additional slots. I also tried the game on Esoteric with saving on and most aggressive NPCs possible, and it was a total overkill. I couldn't catch a break for even a moment, constantly chased by every single enemy left and right. Totally breaks the suspense of the game. It just feels like more of a challenge to those who have already beaten the game on Euclid, many times on top of it. Also, remember to enable the intro sequence if it's your first time playing. It's a nice little prologue about what's going on and how you got there. I'm gonna share my map seat on screen. I was able to beat the entire game from start to finish without any issues, while also getting many achievements along the way, so you can use that if you'd like. 
Upon starting, you wake up in a prison cell in SCP Foundation and are escorted to a containment chamber of SCP-173, which the game describes to you on a piece of paper handed over by the escort soldier. You go into the chamber with two other prisoners and shit hits the fan. Everyone is dead except you and SCP-173 is out. The only thing to do now is to get the hell out of there. But you know that SCP-173 is out here with you. This monster has one of the coolest mechanics in any horror game and I am not exaggerating. SCP-173 is an abomination of a weeping angel. It is a creepy statue that's around 205 centimeters tall and can move only when no one is looking at it. When it gets near you, it snaps your neck immediately. And this is where the blinking mechanic comes into play. In SCP Containment Breach, the character has to blink after a certain amount of time. Well, just like every gamer has to blink eventually. And that's when the monster becomes dangerous. You can also blink by yourself by pressing spacebar before the character does it for you. You can sometimes use that to actually manipulate the movement of SCP-173 by making him follow while looking at him and blinking at just the right distance for him to move. Using that you can take him out of a room that you need to search. It's a very clever idea of a monster that actually poses not much of a threat at all as long as you're composed and know what you're doing. But of course everyone's first try is gonna be very stressful and a lot of people die to this monster right away including me when I first tried the game. Encountering SCP-173 is almost like the opposite of a cheap jump scare. I'm gonna call it an expensive jump scare for the sake of this video. You see, when you approach a room with 173 inside it, it's not really in your face scream type of a jump scare. Instead, it's just his presence. But the moment you see him, you have to react quick. Are you about to blink? Well, if yes, better make a run for it, but you have to run backwards and keep looking at him, otherwise, he's gonna get you. If you panic, it's even more of a jump scare as he snaps your neck in half, killing you in an instant. Maybe you still have a lot of gas left in your eyes and you might be able to just walk past him without breaking a sweat. It's truly an example of a well-crafted monster, one that keeps you at the edge of your seat at all times. You know you can be reckless, eyes wide open, otherwise it can get ugly real quick. That's why I would advise to close the doors behind you every time you go through a room. You can also open and close doors while having your back turned against them so that way you don't have to lose sight. SCP-173 is also capable of opening the doors himself, but he mostly travels through vents across the facility so you can find him pretty much anywhere. And speaking of anywhere, where are we exactly and how can we get out of this cursed facility? Well. The SCP Foundation has three different zones. Light Containment Zone, Heavy Containment Zone, and Entrance Zone. Light Containment is where we start, and it's the zone with mostly safe and Euclid level types of SCPs. We will have to go through the Heavy Containment and from there to the Entrance Zone, which leads to two exit gates, Gate A and Gate B. The order of going through the zones doesn't make much sense, I guess logically it should start from heavy, light and then entrance, but I can understand the design choice, as starting from the most difficult part wouldn't make much sense for the player. To get through different containment zones we will need special keycards on certain levels that help access doors that are normally locked. Majority of SCPs are locked behind keycard accessible doors. This is where the exploration comes into play. You don't really have to check out every single SCP in the game, most of them are optional, but sometimes different SCPs can be very helpful or just not dangerous in particular. For instance, there is an SCP-005 that is essentially just a normal look and ornate key, but it has the ability to open any form of lock, including doors that require keycards. But it is not so easy to access though. During my playthrough, before I got to the keys chamber, I only found an empty room with a note saying, sorry, I got it first. It's certainly worthwhile to discover everything the game has to offer. Even if you don't like reading the notes, you can pretty much test every SCP on yourself and come into a conclusion. Good luck. The two essential items that are skippable is the wallet and the clipboard. You can find both of these in a room with two dead bodies down the stairs quite important to have those as wallet allows us to store keycards, keys, coins and pills inside. 
As for clipboard, you can imagine what it does. Wallet and clipboard have 10 inventory slots and can be even upgraded further, but I'll get to that later. Traversing through the facility is accompanied by a slow, creepy ambient and in many of the corridors you'll find dead bodies, you'll hear sounds of screams echoing through vents. It's an overall disturbing and hostile atmosphere. On top of it all, there is also another SCP that is out to get you, and his name is... Radical Larry? No, seriously, the game says that is his nickname, but uh, let's stick to the official classified name, which is SCP-106, aka Old Man. It's an elderly humanoid, approximately 183 centimeters tall, that is able to appear out of any solid surface, floor, walls, ceilings. He also leaves a black puddle of mud from the place he emerges. Whenever he appears, the only option is to run as far as possible because he's coming to get you, and he can go through walls, so don't bother with the doors. Eventually he does give up and you're safe to stop running, but if you hit a dead end before that happens, you're screwed. But wait, you're not dead yet. 106 transports you into Pocket Dimension, his world where he torches his prey before killing it. And interestingly enough, you can escape the pocket dimension with a bit of luck and snap back to reality. The pocket dimension itself is very abstract and disturbing. Sometimes you can find various notes inside of it that contain codes to different doors, which may make the trip to this dimension worthwhile. If you are lucky enough to escape the old man's world, you might actually end up in heavy containment zone right away because of the teleport. It's a nice way of rewarding the player for having to go through a difficult section. 106 and 173 are our main enemies in the foundation, and you're gonna see them a lot. Sometimes they can even tag team together and chase you both at the same time, which can cause a lot of panic, but again, if you are composed, definitely possible to still outplay both of them. If you are not lucky enough to get to heavy containment through pocket dimension, then you'll have to get there normally by finding the surveillance room and turning off the lockdown of heavy containment zone. Upon doing that, however, a new enemy will appear. This time, it's SCP-049. A tall, 190 centimeters black plague doctor whose touch can kill any person immediately. His hostility towards us comes from an assumption of humans having pestilence disease, which the doctor was created to fight off. Upon killing any human with his touch, SCP-049 performs a quick surgery on the spot to bring a person back to life as a mindless zombie who will now also want to kill any human in proximity. I guess the pestilence according to the doctor is our humanity itself, as the only cure available according to him is to strip a human from all its basic brain functions. Deeper meaning than you would think. Also, the doctor's voice is oddly sexy. Have a listen. Ah, oh, I wasn't aware we had company. We rarely get visitors down here. I know you're in here. There's no need to hide. I'm here to help. Great voice acting for such a low budget free game. Really can't complain here. It's actually one of my favorite SCPs. I love his creepy look on his photo in the document. He appears to be much more aware than someone like 173 or 106. It's quite easy to get away from the doctor. He is more of an obstacle than the main course. Runs slower than us and is also easy to juke. But again, he can also tag team with the others, just like I mentioned last time. And upon opening the surveillance room, he is here to stay, and will travel through the entire facility and every zone, looking for us. So that's another enemy added to the mix now. If you lucked out by getting to heavy containment zone through the old man's world, then don't celebrate just yet. To get a level 4 keycard, you have to visit the doctor's actual chamber, and over there, you are bound to meet him and also encounter him again after visiting the surveillance room. In his chamber, you'll also be introduced to his minions that I mentioned before. Overall, a great addition to the game. During your exploration of light containment zone, you can also find a certain SCP that can be of great use to you. SCP-914. It's a large machine that is able to upgrade or worsen 
any items you place into the intake booth. From my personal experience, I'd recommend putting it into fine, as some items become too extreme for their own good. Thing that is worth putting it on very fine level is your wallet and clipboard, as it will give you twice as much inventory slots. You can upgrade the keycard to a maximum level of 3. After that, it will give you a king of spades, which is useless. But who knows, maybe you can keep it in your wallet for good luck. If you ever find the gas mask or night vision goggles, these are definitely worth putting into 914 on fine mode, as the gas mask will now increase your stamina tremendously and night vision will turn red from green and will not require any batteries from now on. Putting night vision onto very fine gives blue goggles that still require batteries, but this time it can show us any SCP through walls and their exact distance from us. A wall hack of some sort, but not exactly cheating. Now, this machine is also racist. You see, while exploring the facility you can find a black, severed hand that is going to help you get through doors that require fingerprint. And now, guess what happens when you put that black hand into the machine on fine, hmm? Yeah, let's leave it without a comment, huh? You might as well try to upgrade yourself. No, you will not grow taller, but you can become faster, although you might die from a heart attack. Your choice. In all seriousness, it's a great engaging idea to try and upgrade or downgrade all the items you can find. I know that if you put a keycard into it on very fine, there is a small tiny chance that a keycard will turn into an Omni card, which is equivalent to level 5 card, but it can only be obtained from SCP-914. But remember, you are not exactly safe there. SCP-106 can still appear and take care of you real quick, so be fast and vigilant. Navigating through this entire maze can be quite frustrating, so that's when the navigator comes into play. It requires batteries and generates the map as you go. But it's also way better after putting it in 914 on the very fine setting. That way it does not require batteries anymore. The whole map is already uncovered and on top of it all it shows you the proximity of a given SCP. I personally didn't use it much as the map is not really convenient, it's just bland black lines. This could have been expanded a little bit more. Maybe make it Silent Hill style where the character marks places himself that indicate which doors are open, which are not, where everything is located. It would play in the game's favor. Otherwise, it isn't that much useful and also takes up an inventory slot, which is quite valuable. Before we move to the heavy containment zone, I have to talk about the basement, known also as storage area in light containment. The purpose of going there is to find the previously mentioned Black Hand. In that basement we are introduced to another monster, SCP-939. Before going there you can find a note that describes the SCP. From that note you can learn that 939 imitates human speech as a mean to lure its prey, which is you. It's very important to sneak past them as they are also capable of hearing footsteps. If they spot you, you'll hear a scream of a human they previously killed, and they will start chasing you. Now it is possible to lose them off your tail, but the only way to do that is to run around corners all the time as they are not very capable of making quick turns. But in a straight line, you are destined to lose with them. Furthermore, it is important to bring a gas mask with you before even heading to the basement, as there's a leak of gas in the entire area, causing our character to suffocate gradually and lose consciousness eventually. An upgraded gas mask increasing our stamina should make the basement section a walk in the park, but it is nonetheless a very welcome addition, especially since it is not necessary to ever really go there. It is possible to beat the whole game without ever using the hand. It's more of a quality of life scenario in which the hand helps unlock in some shortcuts. Now, going through the heavy containment, things get a little darker and there's already a bunch of enemies after you. You will encounter a lot of Keter class SCPs down there, including SCP-106 on chamber, where it is possible to contain him again using unethical methods of breaking someone's femur to cause agonizing screaming that lures 106 back into his crib and then your job is to lock him in time. 
It's a stressful task to perform, but also very rewarding and gives you a sense of relief afterwards. On top of it, the old man's chamber is where we find the level 5 red keycard. With that you can already pretty much get anywhere you want. Having that keycard is very much worth it and for a certain ending it can also be a necessity to go back to light containment zone and explore all the rooms with various SCPs further. I am specifically talking about the SCP-860, which is a blue key that is going to be necessary to open a certain door which might lead you to a place where you need to go through. You can also find SCP-500, which is a pill to cure any illness you have. For example, I once got crystallized by an SCP-409, which is just a big crystal that upon touching slowly turns you into a crystal itself. Well, upon swallowing SCP-500 pill, all the symptoms stop and crystallization started to decrease. Convenient to get out of accidental trouble. Now the next one is SCP-1499, which is a gas mask that teleports you into a different world with slender type creatures that are preying in a church-like environment and kill you if you look too long at them, so keep your distance I guess. But teleporting there is a great way to escape 106 from chasing you if you haven't yet contained him. There's a bunch of other SCPs in there too, but I'm not going to get into detail on every single one of them, as that would take way too long. Stuff like this is out there on different channels, I'll try to focus on ones that are essential to completing the game instead. Well, let's get back to the heavy containment zone. There's a bunch of stuff you're bound to encounter here ducks that are SCPs playing saxophone, teddy bears giving you drawings indicating your demise. There are also invisible SCPs that can be seen only through night vision goggles and their number is 966. Pretty easy to dodge, they are very slow creatures but if you are close to them for too long they will cause your vision to become blurry and stamina will slowly decrease. Furthermore, even if you don't have night vision, the game still indicates to you in form of a text that it feels like someone is in here with you. One of the scarier guys locked in heavy containment is SCP-096. He is a tall figure, standing at roughly 2.38 meters, ridiculously skinny. It's a very docile SCP that doesn't do much except for walking around, but the moment you view his face, 096 enters panic mode. He will cover his face with his long hands and start shaking and screaming in a very incoherent manner. After around a minute he starts chasing you and when that happens your death is inevitable. It is impossible to escape him, he can open any doors and never stops until he kills you. Now I know this one is one of the most beloved SCPs but I actually have a bit of a problem with this guy. It just doesn't add much to the game besides your first encounter with him. You see, if I already know that whenever I look at his face, it's game over, then why even bother to wait for him to start chasing me? I might as well just load the game right away. Don't get me wrong, it's a great idea for a monster, but there should be a way to win with him somehow, especially because once you unlock him, he will start casing the joint, and you just can't avoid him all the time. I looked at his face accidentally twice, when he was at a distance somewhere in the darkness and at that point all you can do is just to load your last save. It would be a different story if you could somehow get away from him. Maybe using the 1499 mask would be a good way to trick him as it is a different dimension after all, but unfortunately 096 always waits for you after you exit the 1499 world. Great idea for an enemy but there needs to be a better implementation of him. I really think that running away from him with his music on is absolutely terrifying and I wish I could experience it more than just once to check what it's like. On top of all that, I encountered a game break and glitch in one of the rooms where you meet SCP-096. You see, over there the power turns off and you have to flip the switch from main source of power to a generator and unfortunately I was not able to flip the switch, the game just wouldn't let me. 
and without it you can't get out so that's another moment of having to load the game and actually avoid that place and find a way around it shame because the game has been going great until that point being in heavy containment zone feels more like exploring some old soviet bunker with freaky stuff in it Possibly that's what the creators were going for, but it is way too different in comparison to other two zones. To get out of the heavy containment, you first have to turn off the lockdown, and to do that you need to take care of SCP-008, which is basically an infectious gas leak. Put on the hazmat suit, close the lid, watch out for 173, and it's done. Entrance zone is unlocked. The moment you'll open the door to the entrance zone, you'll be introduced to the last major enemy in the game. On top of it, it's the most dangerous one. Nine-tailed fox. And what do you know? It's a human. Actually, a bunch of them. They are a mobile task forces, sent in to recontain all the active hostile SCPs. And terminating any rogue class D personnel, which happens to be you. These guys are the toughest SOPs as they will shoot you on sight and there isn't much you can do about it. Furthermore, they are actually able to recontain SCP-173 into a small cage which turns 173 into a joke. But in that case, why was 173 never locked in that cage forever in the first place? It seems like the foundation was just asking for a disaster to happen. In my case, the MTF were totally glitching out but in a good way for me, they would just totally ignore me and walk past me. I guess I shouldn't complain too much, but you know, glitch is a glitch after all. In general, the moment you hear them anywhere, you immediately have to run the other way. Possible to outplay them, I did a couple times before they glitched. When you get to this part of the game, you can really feel that it is still quite unfinished despite all this time that have passed since initial release. Okay, so now the entrance zone. Over here you obviously won't find any SCP's containments, but they themselves can still come here, and they will. Instead in here you're going to find offices, cafeteria, private rooms that focus on the lore of the game, which to me really don't matter that much. It's hard to care about some of these doctors' characters from their notes when you don't know anything about them. The main place you need to find here is an electrical center, that's where you have to turn off the remote door control system. You see, this whole facility is actually controlled by another SCP. That's a lot of SCPs, I know. 079, which is an old-ass computer, very arrogant and hostile on top of it. Whenever you encounter doors being shut off in front of your face, or a door opening randomly, it was probably 079 doing it. And now you took away his power, so it's time to go pay him a visit back in heavy containment. He'll cut a deal with you, tell you to go back to the electrical room, and turn the remote control back on, and in return, he'll open the gate B for you, which is where the game ends. This computer is actually responsible for the entire outbreak, you can read about it on the monitor in his chamber. Some doctor gave him all the control of the facility, the door and the lights cutting off at the beginning is his fault. There is no other option but to agree to his proposition, do what he says and he'll halt his part of the deal. When you find gate B, it will be open. But there is also gate A, which SCP-079 does not tell you about. In fact, he insists for you to go through gate B. Because, well, that is the bad ending. And he probably knows. Gate A, on the other hand, is also now open. And that is the one you probably want to go through. In my playthrough to get there, I had to get through one final SCP, the 860. Remember that little blue key I mentioned? Well, that is where it comes to use. You have to get through a magical creepy foggy forest that is being patrolled by the beast resembling a lion. You have to go through this small labyrinth as soon as possible before he eats you alive. You can sometimes see his shiny yellow eyes in the fog. When you get to the exit and use the key again, you end up on the other side of the room, back in the facility. And now all that is left is the gate itself. You get in, then walk outside, and before you know it, you are stopped by the nine-tailed fox. But this time, they do not kill you. Instead, escort you. Credits roll, and what do you know? It turns out that you are an SCP yourself. And why, you might ask? Well, because you are able to predict the future. 
you have the saving and loading ability, so you can never fail. You are destined to win. What a twist, huh? Oh yeah, and in the gate B ending, you just die. So that's cool. There are things that can alter the gate B ending, but ultimately you just die anyway, so there is not much of a point to worry about it at all. As you can see, the entrance zone is the shortest section of the game, and it also seems like it lacks in comparison to previous two. There isn't much danger. Yeah, sure, the MTF are out, but somehow the obscurity is now gone. And it turns more into a race of getting out of there than being clobbered with fear. Also, too much comedy. The SCP-420J? <laughs> what? I guess it's cool, but it unnecessarily ruins the atmosphere. As well as the soda machine that can distribute anything you type in for a quarter. Yeah, you can see on the screen what I had picked. Don't judge. This one is quite funny, but also menacingly interesting too. SCP Containment Breach to me is one of the best free horror games that I ever had the pleasure to play. The game really has a lot going for it, and it's absolutely mind-boggling to me that back in 2012, something like Slenderman was receiving way more hype than this gem right here. Now, I know it was way more glitchy back then, but let's be honest, so was Slender. And Slender was a way shorter game without much substance. Even the graphics itself are quite good for a game like this. Support for 120 FPS, FOV options, this is really a great packed experience. I just wish we could get a little bit better implementation of the various SCPs into the game. A lot of them are entirely skippable and it doesn't play in the game's favor. I would have loved to see more coherent connected story, instead it's kind of all just out there and the game leaves it up to you to stumble upon it. Which has its own charm but doesn't do it justice. Majority of these monsters are very creative, even the AAA games struggle to create this much variety in all of the monsters. Games like Alien Isolation, Silent Hill or even Outlast don't even come close. SCP Containment Breach is a game that doesn't become boring because it just keeps you on the edge at all times and rewards you for your composure and ability to handle difficult scenarios. The game just can be such a mess at times, with all the glitches and its comedy, it's almost like the game doesn't know itself what it wants to be, and it definitely should focus on the scare factor as it does it pretty darn good. This game is a piece of art, and I mean it in every way. Reading about all these SCPs in the documents scattered across the facility gives extreme feelings of anxiety and fearful discomfort. The idea of never being safe in any moment is also something that I actually admire. So many games had us used to the idea of a save room, and to not have that in this game means that every second counts, and I have to find enough time to read a document myself, figure out how SCP-914 works, figure out where I want to go. You would think that lack of a save room is an indicator of a poor game design, but I absolutely do not feel this way about SCP. This game feels like a perfect mixture of psychological fear, where the atmosphere scares you itself, but also the physical aspect, as all the creative monsters are there, and they are creepy. More creepy than most I have ever seen. My wish is to see this game without any glitches in its fullest potential, because I feel like it hasn't been used yet. If we could get this game in a AAA type of release, with great graphics, animations, no glitches, and maybe a bit less comedy, and also staying true to the original concept, it easily would have been one of the best horror games of all time. This game truly deserves more than being forgotten as one of slender type games that jump on the popular horror genre wagon. It has achieved way more than 90% of those games ever did. Hell, at this point it holds up even better than a game like Amnesia. It truly is one of a kind. Thanks for watching this video. It came out way longer than I anticipated, but it's hard to describe the game's capabilities without explaining how everything works in the game first. Well, anyway, if you enjoyed the video, please leave a comment, like, subscribe, hit the SCP-513 for me, and I'll see you on the next one. Goodbye. Oh,
Jones to die here. Very well. 